Do you want to know the answers to my most commonly asked questions like should I Kegel and what happens to my body when I have a baby? Well, watch this Instagram live and find out just that. Hi, my name's Laura and on this channel, I help you gain optimal health through knowledge and movement. So right now, if you are joining me on Instagram, I am looking at you as well as on my YouTube channel. So this will go um, till about uh, 7.55 or so. Uh, if you have any pelvic floor questions, please, please, please chime in. Um, I think that we always learn um, by other people's questions, which is um, so great. I am really excited about starting this um, Clitoris Collective community. So I was inspired um, to start this community because I found that so many women um, really had a challenging time figuring out their own bodies. And um, because of that difficulty, um, they often come to me as a pelvic floor physical therapist. Hello, more people joining. Um, so if you're just joining, I just want to reiterate, this is, uh, I'm going to be looking at you as well as my computer. I am so sorry. I had promised to do a free private live on YouTube, but it turns out that the camera was facing the wrong way and I would have not been able to interact and take any questions that come in. So we're on both and we're just rolling with it and it will be just fine and I can promise a new private live um, ask me anything. So I'm very, very excited. Just type in your questions. So anyway, getting back to kind of explaining what this Clitoris Collective will entail for everyone um, is I really want it to be a group where you can ask questions regarding uh, not just pelvic floor issues, but also regarding your own um, physical health. So, or even mental health, I certainly get that a lot as well. Um, I got some questions that came in um, from my five minute tips uh, and <clears throat> one of the questions or one of the biggest questions that I get all of the time um, is talking about pelvic floor muscle strengthening. So everyone seems to want to know how do we um, strengthen those pelvic floor muscles? And it's just, it's such a huge thing for women. And I don't know if it's because maybe people um, have had a family member or friends or maybe personally um, you've experienced that leaking of urine. So you think, okay, well, in order to not leak, I have to be stronger. And so, I mean, I remember reading this in Cosmopolitan magazine all the way back in high school um, or earlier, whenever my parents let me have that magazine about stopping the flow of urine. And it just, it kills me when people get so obsessed about strengthening these little group of muscles. So I really want to touch on that um, in today's q and I also want to touch about touch on some of the products that are currently out on the market that tout about strengthening our pelvic floor. And I'm realizing this is gonna be a really long live um, if I'm going to have to hold my phone the entire time. So I'm gonna go ahead, just I hope you guys don't get ill as I try to pop out my phone from its case. Hang on one second, I'm gonna turn you away here. Oh. Oh, shit.
Okay. Oh, excuse me if you heard me swear. So I'm just gonna pop this up right by my YouTube. There we go. Now I can have my arms and you won't be barfing from all of the movement. Okay, so the pelvic floor muscles and strengthening. So there is no muscle in our body that we only work on contracting, contracting, contracting. So the pelvic floor, if you've heard me say this before, you can maybe zone out for a second, but I'm gonna go through it again. So the pelvic floor is a group of 26 muscles. They attach at the front of your pubic bone and they run like a sling or a hammock and they attach to the tailbone and the sacrum. So these 26 muscles help to stabilize our spine and our hips. They help to um, give us continence for both urine and bowel. They help to hold our pelvic organs up and in place. And then they also deal with sexual appreciation. So those are a lot of the things that you will hear me talk about on my blog. And that is why I wanted to create um, a community that wasn't just about me, but was really a community for um, humans that have pelvic floors, which is all of us, but a safe space where we can come together and we can get some really, really, really good information out there about our health, about our wellness, about our pelvic floor. So um, going back to the pelvic floor strengthening piece, because that was a lot of the questions that I got. So with our pelvic floor, you can contract and relax those muscles. And if we only focus on contracting those muscles all of the time, then what happens is they can get shortened and inflexible. Um, so think of maybe your hips or your neck muscles or your shoulder muscles. When we hold positions for extended periods of time, we get stuck in those positions um, and we don't have that flexibility and that range of motion to easily move throughout life. So if we only focus on strengthening, our pelvic floor muscles can get so shortened and so tight that um, they don't have the ability to contract and hold that urethra closed when we need it to. And therefore, we have leaking. Okay, so please, 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 please pop in if you are having any questions about that. So now that brings me to um, the question about do we need to Kegel? What does a, an appropriate Kegel look like? Um, personally, I feel that not many people need to dedicate time to Kegeling. So let me explain what Kegeling is. So Kegeling is where you tighten your pelvic floor muscles. So we can practice that right now. Tightening your pelvic floor muscles kind of um, feels like you're closing your vagina or you're stopping the flow of urine. So try that for me for a moment, gently. You might feel, now let go of that, you might feel a lifting, a squeezing of those muscles. You do not want to feel a bearing down, a bulging. You do not want to be holding your breath when you do this. So that is what a Kegel is, okay? Now, I will say research shows that just verbally explaining a Kegel to someone, about 50 to 80% of people still complete it incorrectly. So that is something that I want you to pay attention to. Now, um, with these, going back to what I was saying before about constantly tightening or um, 
contracting those pelvic floor muscles, if we're always holding those muscles tight, 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 um, then we don't have that flexibility. So if we go to get a, um, say, a uh, one of those Benoit balls or a Kegel ball, or there are these things called um, EVs where you place them internally and you have to contract around them. If we were to purchase one of those, then we're focusing on that contraction moment constantly, constantly, constantly. And we're not ever capturing that relaxation moment. Okay. So I think that instead of focusing on contracting, 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 buying things online to get that contraction, I think it is more important to look at some of the other larger muscle groups that surround our pelvic floor. So when we think of our larger muscle groups that surround our pelvic floor, I want you to think of your buttocks muscles, your tummy muscles, your hip muscles, okay? Even thinking into some of our uh, arm muscles like your lats. So um, these muscles are extremely important to work on strengthening because when we can get the big brothers to contract, to engage, it's going to allow for more support with our pelvic floor as long as we focus on our breathing. Okay. So that's a huge piece and I'll touch base on that later. But this is one of the important things and why I'm so happy to have started this Clitoris Collective, and I'll talk more about that name later, is because I am here to offer you solutions that aren't just about Kegling. I'm here to offer you solutions that are also for strengthening those larger muscle groups, which is going to be more important for your pelvic floor function, meaning keeping you from being incontinent, but is also going to be extremely important for your ability to function in life, okay? So a lot of times when people have leaking, they have leaking because they have difficulty um, with moving say with dynamic movements, when you're maybe doing CrossFit or Orange Theory Fitness or things like that. So by relying on these resources that I'm going to give you through Cl Clitoris Collective and lauramayhoffer.com, then we can go ahead and we can start to get some more strengthening, get some more functional movement so that you're healthier overall. Okay. So now, if I have, say I have children, okay? I don't have children. I have dogs, um, which all of my dog people, my cat people, maybe you're a snake person, reptile person, whatever it is. If you have to reach down and pick up something heavy, okay? And that's difficult because maybe you don't have the arm strength to grab your kiddo. Maybe you don't have the arm strength to, to lift up that garbage bag or that laundry basket from the ground. You don't then think, oh my gosh, I'm going to pick one small muscle group and I'm just going to strengthen that one small muscle group until the cows come home. You don't go to the gym or go into maybe um, your your uh, cabinet and grab some soup cans and just only do bicep curls. No, when you want to get stronger, when you want to be able to lift up your baby, uh, lift up that laundry basket, you think about working the front of your arm, the back of your arm, your shoulders, your chest, the whole thing. And so that's what I want you to start thinking about when you're thinking about strengthening your pelvic floor. And I'm going to be honest with you, and that's really, really huge here with this Clitoris Collective is being honest, being vulnerable. Um, I struggle with these things too. Not all of the issues, um, but I definitely struggle with some of the issues. And the urinary incontinence piece can definitely be one. 
especially when I'm pushing myself really hard at an exercise class. Now, that brings me to my next point, the breathing point. So when we are working these muscles, we want to make sure that we are breathing properly. When we hold our breath, that will increase the pressure in our tummy and that can cause leaking. And again, this ask me anything is an opportunity for us to create a safe space so that we can get together, we can hash out some of these questions that you have so that you can figure out if you need to go see someone like me um, so that you can get healthier, so that you can get better, so that you can exercise with confidence. Um, I currently work out at Orange Theory. I've worked out at CrossFit. I've worked out on my own, all of those things. And it breaks my heart when I hear people next to me running saying, I'd love to push myself further, but I just can't because I know I'm going to leak. So the Clitoris Collective is here to serve you and to give you resources so that you can start to strengthen and get better. But from my opinion, right now, I would say hold off on getting the over-the-counter strengthening things. Don't go get a Benoit ball. Don't go get a Yoni egg. Don't go get um, the $200 thing that connects with your phone. Um, just hold off on that. And instead, start to add some more sets, some more repetitions to your leg exercises if you're already going to the gym. So do some more lunges. Do some more squats. As long as you're not leaking while you're doing those activities, Add some more to them. And don't always do the exercises straightforward. Go out to the side, okay? And again, these will be things that I will give to you as we progress with this community. Um, and I encourage you to reach out through my connection page to let me know what you want to hear. So again, everything is going to be tailored and catered to this community. Okay, one of the other questions that I had is when you have a hysterectomy, does that change things? Um, now, I forgot, I promised that I would announce who the winner is of my Manduka Yoga swag. So first, let me explain what the swag is and why I chose it, because I chose it for a very, very, very specific reason. I, first of all, really like the company um, Manduka. I think their products are really good. Um, they're tried and tested, so you can put them through the rounds and they don't break down. Um, I think that that's just really huge um, because certainly over the years, I've had many a yoga block, many a yoga strap, and they break and all of that. So what I recently got was a traveling yoga mat. Now, I was kind of hesitant to first buy it myself um, because I thought, oh my gosh, what what is this? This, this can't be that great. But I am obsessed. So the deal with this traveling yoga mat is that it's a lot thinner. Um, so it folds up really, really small, which I absolutely love. And it's super lightweight. So I'm definitely that person that completely, completely, completely overpacks, like way, 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 way overpacks where I'm going up, I'm going to check my bag and I'm just praying that it does not go over the 50 pounds. Uh, I don't know why that is, but it's just always the case. So anytime I can save a pound or two, an ounce or two, I'm totally all over it. So um, it's really light so it can fit in my carry on, even if I'm rolling it with me. Um, and it packs up really small so I can still take all of my stuff with me. Now, the other 
piece that I really, really, really love about this yoga mat is that it's um, when I take it with me and if the place I'm staying at has a gym, I don't have to use their nasty ones that I know no one cleans and I try to clean myself and Lord knows they never get clean. It also allows me to stretch in my room so I don't have any excuses. Um yeah, so I really love it. So I so the winner gets the um, traveling yoga mat, which I'm obsessed with. They also get a strap um, so that they can help with the pose modifications because I show a lot of that um, in my uh, in my different videos. I love using a yoga strap. I am extremely um, inflexible, which I am completely okay with. Uh, but I think that it's just really, really nice. And it's one of those things that I didn't buy for myself for a really long time. So I thought, oh, that's stupid. I can use a belt, but I really, really noticed the difference. And then lastly, I got a carrier for the yoga mat. So the winner is actually Nikki um, Dirkman. And I might have said that last name incorrectly, but I have your email. So I will be emailing you to do your um, Manduka giveaway. So thank you so, so much for participating. All right. Now on to the next piece of things, talking about how our body changes after a surgery. Okay. So this can be a surgery because you had a C-section. Maybe it's a surgery. Um, years ago, you had your appendix removed. So I had a family member who had their appendix removed. Um, maybe it's a hysterectomy um, or an ophorectomy. So that's where your um, your ovaries are removed. Or maybe you simply just had a baby and had a vaginal delivery. So I think that this is a huge important piece specifically for individuals who have a uterus. Um, the reason why I say that is because our um, abdominal canister, everything just doesn't kind of sit at the bottom of this abdominal canister. I like to think of it as a 3D spider web. So everything is kind of held up into, into place um, by the stuff called fascia. And fascia, if you think about it, is similar to um, when you peel an orange and that uh, white stuff that covers the orange, that's what fascia is. And so this fascia sort of holds all of these different things up and in place. And um, it, uh, it's super great, but when we have a surgery, especially in our abdominal canister, that fascia is disrupted. When we have a baby, our uterus goes from a very, very small, small, small organ, and it stretches and expands to house the baby. And then, yes, it does shrink down after having a baby, but it doesn't shrink down to the pre-level uh, it was prior to having a baby. And so I, um, I think it's really important, not that you need to have this amazing knowledge of um, your anatomy, but I wanted to highlight that the uterus is held in place by three ligaments, okay? Made a little note down to myself over on the side, so that's why you'll see me peeking over there. Um, you have your uterine ligament, Okay, you've got your ovarian ligaments and then finally your broad ligament. So when we have an incision that cuts through the abdomen and then if we have our uterus removed or our ovaries removed, those ligaments are disrupted. And interestingly enough, those attach to our abdominal wall. They can attach to our spine and down into our sacrum. So oftentimes people will have pain when they have had a surgery or even after having a baby. They might have back pain. They might have abdominal pain. They might have hip pain because that abdominal canister has been disrupted. And it's completely, it's fine. It's nothing to panic about, but it is a call to action. 
It's a call to action to find a pelvic floor physical therapist who can come and who can help you get better, okay? And even if you're wondering, gosh, do I fall into that category? I don't know. Sometimes I have hip discomfort. Sometimes I have back discomfort. Then come to this community, Go through the blogs that we um, that I have. Go through um, the different lives that we'll be offering in the future. Ask for and ask me um, live. Reach out so that we can discuss this and see what it is that's going on and how we can help you get better. So now I wanted to talk a little bit about the name Clitoris Collective because I am so, so very pumped about that name. Okay. I came up with it um, with a little bit of help, but I think the clitoris is so amazing. It's kind of funny looking and um, it's kind of reminds me of a person. So it was not that long ago that we discovered kind of what the clitoris looks like because so many people think it's just that little nub externally when in actuality it's so much more and you'll see that in my pictures. So um, I was trying to think of a group name and I had already reached out to some lovely artists to do some drawings of Clitori. Uh, and I just get so delighted about it and it always makes me smile that I thought, why not go with it? But I think that it's important to note that even though this group is called Clitoris Collective, it is welcoming to all individuals, okay? You do not have to have a clitoris to be in this group. You do not have to identify with calling it that as part of your body, okay? So many people who identify as female and male may or may not have a clitoris. And that is totally cool. And I want you to come join, okay? Because again, I want this community to be reflective of the people that I see and the people that are out in this world. And we can always, always, always learn more from each other. And so that is how I came up with that name, um, just from a little fascination. And um, I'm, I'm really excited to see how it grows and see how these um, different offerings uh, can expand. So some of the things to highlight for you uh, that are already up and maybe you're not familiar with is the different uh, modification videos I have uh, on my YouTube site. I am going to have, and maybe you've already seen this on the blog, there are several blogs that highlight um, the different yoga postures. So when people are working out, um, whether that's doing yoga, whether that's lifting, whatever it is, um, I oftentimes see that they try to do movements and they're trying, trying, trying really, really hard uh, and they're just compensating. And so by compensating, I mean that they might um, go a little bit lower on one side than the other. Um, and they'll do the movement incorrectly just so that they can finish it or that they can do it in the exact way that the instructor or the physical therapist is asking them to do it. So I um, am offering these different videos to um, really show how uh how you can still do any posture, any pose without needing to do that full, full expression. Um, so I'm very, very excited for that. And I want you guys to check it out. And again, if I, I cannot say this enough, please tell me what you want to hear. Okay. Tell me what is interesting to you. What movements are you having trouble completing um, so that I can create 
the videos for you. Um, so we are drawing to the end of the Ask Me Anything Live. Thank you for sticking with me through this. I promise my next Ask Me Anything Live will go off without a hitch. Um, I will be sending this live out to all of the people that joined the collective so you can definitely catch it later in your inbox. And I will also um, be stating another uh, opportunity for a free private Ask Me Anything Live since this one did not go over exactly how I wanted. So I hope everyone has an amazing, amazing evening and keep moving. And I can't wait to hear more from you guys. Bye. If you want to start connecting with your pelvic floor through breath and movement, check out my most favorite yoga posture with all of its modifications. I'll see you over there.